What's up guys, welcome to another YouTube video. This is gonna be just a vlog on the road to running 100 miles. So today we have an eight mile easy run and then we have a shoulder workout. And uh, throughout the day, I'm just kinda give you like some tips and tricks with food and uh, just a normal vlog and kinda talk about training, have a voice overview on that and talk about what my training's like and, and give you the rundown of my shoulder day. So with that being said, yeah. We're 24 weeks out from running 100 miles. And for those that are new to the channel, I've never run over 26 in my life. So it should be fun. So whenever I wake up in the morning, I am always super fatigued and also sore. Um, so I'm gonna show you guys because I know a lot of people wonder what I use to recover um, as far as stretching. So I'm gonna show you guys. Um, Pretty simple. First thing I do is I take a foam roller and this is the main thing I use to break up the muscle tissue. Um, just loosen it up. So I start out on my back. I'll roll out my like traps a bit, my upper back. And then I'll roll out my lower back here. And just really, uh, really dig into those muscle fibers. Whenever I feel a knot where it's like super sore, what a knot is is kind of like where muscles are really tensed up. I'll just roll over that area. Um, even though it hurts. Yeah, that hurts. Next, I roll out my calves. I put one foot on top of the other and just roll over the calf to get some more pressure on there. Um, like I said, you gotta kind of roll around to feel where it's painful. Um, if it's too painful, I, I sometimes go to two just to loosen it up a more. Um, so I have to do that because my calves are pretty tight. Honestly, everything's pretty tight right now. Whenever I feel, like I said, a, a spot that hurts, I just roll over it until it gets looser. That way I know I'm really massaging those those joints and muscles. I always feel better after I do this and before a run, you just feel fresh. You know, you don't wanna do it, but it's one of those things where it's like, working on a car, you gotta take care of it for it to run. So next, I'm gonna go into some stretching. Um, after I roll out my quads. So I'm gonna roll out the quads real quick. Roll out the quads and I'll work my way up into the groin area around the hip flexor. Just really, this kind of just like massages my entire body. Oh, we'll do some stretches. So I just bring this knee in, push down on my, my quad and just really reach forward, keep this toe straight out in front. That's how it feels when I make it a point to stretch, you know. Um, when it hurts, like I said, I try to take a deep breath and just sit in the pain as long as I can, or the stretch. I like doing these, I sit on my ankles and lean back. I just really feel a stretch here for my ankle mobility. Just lean back. And lastly, I like to do the butterfly. This just warms up my hips. Press down on my elbows inside my thighs. Now this is one of my favorite exercises here. And stretching so yeah that's the warm-up now let's go hit this run uh, pick up my coffee because I need my coffee it's a simple but a strategic way of making protein coffee so before we even introduce the coffee we have um, eight ounces of almond milk and then we have one scoop of collagen from revive and then we have one scoop of grass-fed vanilla whey protein. And then we add a little bit of sugar-free syrup. Now, that's all in there. What you don't do 
Like I said, this is the biggest mistake. You make sure you mix it in the milk before. If you don't, it will clump up. There's scientific reasons behind that shit. I don't understand, but make sure you mix it before. Then what I'll do is like, I'll go to like the closest coffee shop or gas station. I'll just stick that cup under and fill it up. On my way to the run, um, that'll get the bowel movements going. Sometimes it's real freaking fast. Like take that first sip, it's like phew. Um, so yeah, that's why I like it. Keeps me routine and it tastes amazing. This, uh, you know, I'll add stevia to it, but I mean, this skinny syrup just is amazing. I bought it on Amazon, it's pretty cheap. And yeah, make sure your protein coffee level, like if you're, if you're a level one protein coffee maker, as soon as you add that skinny syrup, you turn into like a level, 74 so it, it is 74.6 it's really game changing um i mean if you guys want to know what level i am i'm a level 99.67 prestige anyways i mean we can all get there one day but it takes a lot of time so let's go fill this puppy up guys let's talk about the diet today's gonna be a diet talk in the truck um, and the Dirty Max Diesel. Fuck, I gotta get deaf. If you guys don't know what deaf is, it's an emission bullshit that they make you put in this shit so it doesn't smoke up and, and be a badass truck. It kind of puts a little governor on it. It's like someone going into the gym and they're they being like, you can bench 225. Like, you know you can bench 225, you hit it before, but they make you bench 135. They limit your power. That's what this deaf shit is. Um, Anyways, enough with the truck rant. Let's get on a nutrition rant. So, you know, I'm very known and I'm very a big advocate of protein fasting. Um, the term protein fasting, protein leveraging, is something I like to do. And uh, it's really uncommon, but it's really very common in my life and the way I do it is I make it very simple and and this is the biggest issue when it comes to dieting with hybrid athletes or even bodybuilding like this is what has made me successfully step on stage twice sub five percent body fat or around there I don't you know I don't I don't know what I was but I was shredded um, what it is is it's pretty much as you push your carbs and your fats later off right because you know what happens when you have your carbohydrates in the morning you know if you're going to do it to fuel your training 100 percent, i get it but if you're going say you're you're going to work and um or say you have like a long run that you don't necessarily need to fuel based on the aerobic capacity that you have for example say you normally run eight miles a day or say you normally run five miles a day whatever and you have like a three mile easy run you really don't need because you're not like exerting a lot of force into the ground you really don't need those glycogen you can burn fat on that run that's what aerobic is you know you want to work at the slower heart rate so you're not tapping into muscle glycogen so with that being said there's just times where you know i won't eat carbs and that's most mornings but if i have a crazy workout like a really really long run i'll have some carbs um, which is normally fruit and my protein shake uh protein coffee but the only time you want to use carbs is if you have a, like a very intense weight training session and you didn't get enough in the night before and you feel flat yeah add some carbs but if you eat enough the night before have a big carb meal normally that glycogen fills up your muscles and it's not going to leave the next morning like people think like oh what i eat like last night just fucking gets thrown out the door now that is stored as muscle glycogen um and that you'll have in the morning as long as you're not burning through it if you're eating enough food that's why eating enough food is the most important aspect to training when you protein fast you save your carbs and your fats for later in the day right um what this does is and make sure in the morning you don't have to stuff yourself it keeps you more satiated to go to bed because nobody likes going to bed with 400 calories left you know that sucks or or going to bed and having to starve yourself i would rather be busy during the day like move around and shit like not think about food and then when the night comes you know obviously like eat your carbs eat your fats and and you know eat it more so yeah i eat throughout the day but my biggest meals my most caloric dense 
for carbs and fats are at night, especially fats, because slow down digestion of the meals and uh, you'll feel more satiated when you go to bed. Nobody likes going to bed hungry and that's when the scary hungry munchies come out and it's a different person. So yeah, just wanna have that rant with you guys and um, yeah, let me know if you like that truck rant. Dirty Max truck rant. I'm gonna start doing this. Oh, this is a steal. So, filled this whole thing up with, with coffee then at Wawa. Right here. I mean, look at that. This whole thing filled with protein coffee. Just, you literally just can't beat it. So, as you guys see, this is the outfit that I used to go run. Right here we have five inch seamless shorts on. Um, now I love these because they make you feel naked when you run, they're so lightweight. Um, they're just amazing. So these are five inch seamless shorts. That's the perfect length for me, um, being six foot. Then we have Crocs. I'm switching those out for running shoes. Gymshark socks and then the Gymshark three-quarter hoodie with the hat um, or a zip up. But I love this because it's super tight, um, really nice snug fit and then these shorts make you feel naked. So it's a really good combo. Now it sounds weird but I like it a lot. Code French if you want to save some money just want to show you guys that. Alright so we're swapping out the shoes. The nice cozy Crocs for some our running shoes. I use the Asics gel nimbus 25s um they're amazing my favorite ones um a lot of cushion but most importantly i want to say during these runs they're nice and chill they're therapeutic for me um and i throw in a podcast or an audiobook and just really listen to something that will that'll help my mindset with this ultra and uh just get me in the right mindset and frame of mindset to uh, push through those hundred miles. And you know, during this run, I always pretend towards the end I'm looking at the finish line, really see it through, and never fucking um, quit. So, yeah. I tie my shoes. You don't want to tighten them too tight. You want everything to be calm and loose. So, just tighten them enough to stay on, and then. Yeah, it's go time. The Crocs will be back on soon. Keeping it low heart rate. Nice and chill miles. We're coming up on this little bridge. Ooh, a little slippery. Gotta eat shit. Knock my nuts off this wood. Looking for some deer on this trail. Hoping I'd see a big buck, but no signs of any yet. Logging some miles still. Took the views. Turn around this lake. But I want to say one of the reasons why I love running is because it's just you and your thoughts, right? Out where nobody else can bother you. The only battle you have is that voice being like, take a break. You're tired. Now I cut this run short. And you see that inner voice, that inner bitch. To shut the hell up. I'm finishing this run. And I don't give a damn what you think. The mind controls where the body goes. And the body is a reflection of the mind. So if you're soft, getting soft on your diet, I've been there. That's because my mind's weak. I'm not making right decisions. 
making the easy decision, not the right one. I've learned it's better to be consistently aware and good rather than rarely being very good and making irrational decisions based on what you want right now. What you want right now is never worth long-term gratitude and consistency. Remember, the harder it is, the better the outcome. And the more rewarding the outcome, and the more you learn from those experiences. Sorry, this is raw footage, my mindset during these runs. Hope you like them. I'm getting tired of holding this damn phone. That's what I fucking train for. When I see hills, it reminds me that in life, you're gonna have times where it's really hard and you get some resistance. You might struggle with something at work, struggle with something mentally. But if you just push through this hill, any hill, any barrier in life, it's always a downside to every mountain, always a slope where it gets better. Just remember that, stay in the fucking fight. Come on. Just like that. That little fight is never as bad as you think. So just wrapped up. Eight miles, nice and chill pace. 8.41 minute per mile. Total time, an hour and nine minutes moving. A good feeling right here. Got the croc dogs on. But yeah, this run, these runs, like, I'm just sharing this with you from the bottom of my heart. I'm doing this ultra for myself, but also for everybody that never once believed in themselves to go chase whatever the fuck is their goal. Like, don't let anybody, you know how many people tell me, like, Nathan, I don't know if you can run 100 miles. That's a long distance. I've gotten messages from that. And I know people are going to question me and, and doubt me or not in a way of hate or just you know just worry um but i'm here to show you guys that i'm going to chase down what i believe is possible in myself because i believe in myself and like i said i was once that one kid that didn't so the only way you build confidence and believe in yourself is by overcoming something you never thought you could and this is one thing i never thought i could do but i'm going to go do that thing so eight miles in the bag Time to go uh, work. I got some client work I got to do. Uh, if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching, hybridperformance.com. Uh, um, there's a link there. But you know, we'll go work on some client work and build um, the clothing company as well. So yeah, we got a bunch of shit going on, and then we'll hit a lift. Show you guys some nutrition as well. So let's do it. Picked up a large diet lemonade. Tastes amazing after a long hot run. Now post workout after my runs to make sure I'm rehydrated I have an electrolyte pack um, now these are the best electrolytes I've ever tasted um, some of them get way too salty they have way too much um, sodium like I used to take one that had 500 milligrams per scoop which was way too much sodium um, gummed up in my mouth so these are 250 milligrams of sodium they're the bum um, hydration you guys can use code French um, at raw but yeah this is what I'm gonna have in some water sip on that while I do some client work and then it's time to work out so catch you then Now, real quick before we go to the gym, I gotta share with you guys what I've been building and the shirts I have coming, um, part of the brand. I have an idea of where I wanna take it. I don't necessarily want it to be clothing, but I don't wanna give two away, too much away. Um, but this is my company I'm gonna be launching. But at first, it's gonna be starting out with just some sayings that like I always say, and I think it can relate to a lot of people. And it's a good mindset to have, like I said, bad day to be Miles. 
So that's what I put on the first shirt. So let me quick show you guys. All right, so this is gonna be this shirt. It's a tight fit around the arms, um, just to make you look a little stronger and bigger. Um, I just like the tight fit. Um, fits really snug and clean. Um, right here, we have the hybrid logo and uh, it's got a very sleek design underneath, which incorporates and ties it into what it means on the back. So on the back right here, Bad day to be Miles. Super clean, nice fit. And I have one other thing. This is the hoodie. Very simple. It's got a hybrid right on the front. Clean, simple, just how I like it. Um, and this is like the hoodie. Super nice quality and material. Um, but yeah, that's everything. Uh, follow the hybrid Instagram if you guys want to see more of what's going on with that and when it's dropping. That's, I haven't posted yet on that website and that's just because I'm working out manufacturing and stuff. So with everything else going on, I'm just trying to bring it to life as well. This is pretty much it. Um, you guys can follow it on hybrid if you're interested in, in purchasing or supporting me and I really appreciate it. So yeah, I just want to show you guys something I've been working hard for and uh, yeah, makes me smile because I, uh, you know, I work, I've just been working hard to try and make this come to life and seeing it on a shirt is pretty cool. So yeah. Post workout, we have egg whites with one egg and some peach salsa with some fat free cheese, some sourdough bread, two slices with uh, low fat butter. And yeah, this is gonna be the post-workout meal. What's up guys? I'm um, gonna walk you guys through my shoulder workout by watching it. Um, but while we're watching it, I wanna talk about anxiety and how to cope with it with um, just life in general. You know, We all get anxiety from certain things and whether we identify it as anxiety or, or we identify it as um, something else, uh, it's just something I wanna give you guys because I, I experience it with trying to build business and also you know balancing all the pressure from um, you know just that I put on myself through social media and performing um, I just really want to talk about this stuff so I want to explain kind of the way uh, anxiety works and how to deal with it um, I faced it from my Iron Man and I face it more than most people think I know on the outside I look like I have everything mentally dialed in but that's not the case um, but what I want to start off by saying is what helps me is by looking at it as like uh, a fire alarm in a house the anxiety that you experience that problem um, the anxiety is kind of like just the fire alarm detector telling you that there's something bothering you um, you can either just pull those uh, those batteries out and then the, fi the house catches on fire when it's going off um, because there's no batteries to sense it, or you can deal with the problem, burn the fires in or the smoke in the certain rooms and really take care of the problem instead of um, taking the short fix or the short dopamine hit, you know, whether that's um, anything that, that you're doing that isn't good for you or anything that you're doing like, you know, binge eating or something like that, just because it makes you feel better or, or eating like shit um, for that short dopamine. No, that's pulling out the batteries and then your house burns down and then it leads to more issues. What you got to do is fix the problem. Put those damn batteries back in and take the fire. Even though it might be scary, it might be a little wild. Just take it and burn it out and then you won't have to worry about the smoke alarm. It'll slowly go away. I'm sharing this with you guys just because like literally I, I struggled with it because I used to run away from all of it. but we just kind of face your fears or face whatever's causing it think about what the root problem is is and face it and and really go after it because you can't let something that that bothering or or stressful in your life just not be handled it just builds up because after time that smoke's just going to fill the whole house if you pull those batteries and it'll just all hit you at once and it'll just be keep getting worse you just got to fight the fire but I just wanted to say that and thank you guys for, for listening. I hope that hope that helps somebody out there. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to finish up the video and see you guys soon. 
All right, what's up guys? So that's gonna be the end of the workout today. Um, hope you guys like it, like, comment, subscribe. Road to 100 miles. Let's go get it.